Okay, so in our last example, we used heat of formation reactions to uh, uh, calculate the enthalpy change for the overall reaction of the combustion of methane to form CO2 and water. Well, it turns out if you do enough of these, uh, you'll notice a few patterns. Uh, when we uh, did the heat of formation reaction, or when we used the heat of formation reaction for methane, we had to flip it. Uh, that's because anytime you have a re uh, compound that's a reactant, uh, on the reactant side, the heat of formation of uh, reaction of, is of course going to uh, have it as a product. So you're always going to need to flip uh, the reactants. And then we had to multiply uh, the water's uh, heat of formation reaction by 2 because it had a coefficient of 2. Uh, so that we ended up with 2 moles of water on the product side. And then we added up all of the heat of um, formation enthalpy changes. Okay, um, so we're always going to have to do that. We're always going to have to flip the heat of formation reactions for reactant molecules and compounds. And we're also always going to have to multiply by the uh, coefficients. And then we add them up. Okay, and so instead of just adding them all up after we flip the reactant's heat of formation reaction, we can also subtract the heat of formation reactions for any reactant molecules. And that's uh, usually what we can do. So uh, we can even uh, show this as an equation. So that's the potential energy diagram for the, the previous um, reaction that we set up. Uh, we can summarize all those moves by uh, calculating the heat of our reaction, the enthalpy change for any reaction, by summing, and how we'll show that in an equation is with the Greek letter sigma, which means summation. So we're going to sum. So we're going to sum all the heat of formation reactions for the products, and we're going to multiply them by their coefficients. Then we're going to add up all of the reactants, heat of formation reactions, and subtract them. And that will give us the heat of formation reaction, or excuse me, enthalpy change for any uh, reaction that we want. Uh, we're also going to need to multiply the uh, heat of formation for the reactions by their coefficients. Okay, so what do all these uh, symbols mean? Okay, the Greek letter sigma just means sum. So we're going to add them all up. And we're going to multiply the heat of formation reactions, uh, enthalpy change, by the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation uh, for whatever we are calculating. All right, and so in both cases, both the products and the reactants. All right, so let's try this uh, for an example. For example, uh, 6.11, 6.11 uh, is going to have us determine the enthalpy change for this reaction. All right, so that's what we want to figure out. We want to figure out the heat of formation, or excuse me, just heat of um, heat of the reaction, the enthalpy change for this reaction, where uh, we got four moles of ammonia. Reacting with five moles of oxygen to produce four moles of nitrogen monoxide and six moles of water. All right. So if we're going to write the equation for this um, reaction, it would be the heat of the reaction. That's what we change for this reaction. Would be equal to the sum of the products, heat of formation reactions. So we're going to add the heat of formation for nitrogen monoxide, multiplying it by four moles to the heat of formation reaction for water times 6 moles, because those are its coefficients. Then we're going to subtract the sum of all the reactants. So we're going to look up the heat of formation reaction for ammonia, and we're going to multiply it by 4, and we're going to add it to the heat of formation reaction for oxygen, which we're going to multiply by 5. Now, when we looked at the heat of formation reactions, <coughs> we saw that uh, all the uh, elements were zero, so that's going to turn out to be zero, but if you forget it, we can always just put it in there and look it up. All right, so now we're going to have to look up these uh, heat of formation reactions, or enthalpy changes for them. So, let's look up nitrogen monoxides. So, nitrogen monoxide in here, so it's positive 91.3 kilojoules per mole. 91.3 kilojoules.
kilojoules per mole plus six times water. Now water has a couple heat of formation reactions. We're going to need to look up the one for the gas phase, which we did previously, and it was negative 241.8. Negative 241.8 kilojoules per mole. Now we're going to do the same thing for our reactants. So we have four times heat of formation for ammonia. Ammonia is going to be negative 45.9 kilojoules per mole. And again, I know oxygen is going to be zero, so I'll just write that out because it's a an element. And so we'll throw that into our calculator to get the enthalpy change for this reaction. So we're going to do 4 times 91.3 plus 6 times a negative 241.8 minus 4 times a negative 45.9 and I get negative 900.8 kilojoules per mole. Now for our significant figures, uh, we'll have to go with, since this is going to be addition and subtraction, we'll go with the least number of decimals, and so we can keep that uh, 0.8 as our enthalpy change.